Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn it to Isaiah chapter 24. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Isaiah 24 is an end times prophecy, and uh, there's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of prophecy in the Old Testament. People just don't realize it. And your preachers, well, they they don't want you to read the Old Testament because when you start asking questions, um, either they don't know or they don't want to answer. So to avoid that, they'll just say, well, you know, that's... That's for that the Chosenites. That's that's not for us. We're New Testament Christians. Of course, they don't want you to read the New Testament either. Um, but it's funny they'll tell you all the laws were nailed to the cross except for the tithe. Yeah, you got a tithe. Um, you got a tithe to the Lord, but uh, this is going into our collection plate. Yeah. So. You could tell I don't have a very high opinion of preachers, do you? So, let's go. Isaiah 24, verse 1. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. So, obviously, this hasn't happened yet, so verse 2. And it shall be, as with the people, so with the priest. As with the servant, so with his master. As with the maid, so with her mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, as with the giver of usury to him. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken this word. The earth mourneth, and fadeth away. The world languisheth, and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Now you got to realize something. God's covenants are everlasting. But if a covenant is like a contract, you know, I'm going to sell you my car for a thousand bucks and you're going to give me $100 a month payment for it for 10 months, right? And uh, that's the contract. Well, if you only give me three months of $100 payments and then quit, well, guess what? You broke the contract. And that's what happened, people. God kept his end of the bargain, the covenant, but the people didn't keep their end of the bargain. So... Because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth. The, earth pro uh, the Lord promised blessing if you obeyed, and curses if you disobeyed. And the UK, the EU, and the USSA are now into the curse phase, but um, the most majority of your Baptist churches don't think that they're going to be around to see any of this stuff. They think they're going to fly out of here any second, a pile of clothes laying on the floor, and they're going to be gone. And they don't realize that God said if you didn't honor him and his laws and his covenants and his statutes um, 
that there would be curses. So they just don't get it. They think, oh, well, that's only for the Chosenites. That's not for us. Well, now, the statutes and ordinances, you have to understand something. The Bible told you what to do with murderers. It wasn't to put them in jail for the rest of their life and give them three meals with air conditioning and color cable TV. No. No, the Bible told you what to do with murderers. The Bible also told you what to do with sodomites and witches and Satanists. But we're too progressive to do that. Oh, no. Baptists don't realize it. And I'm, I'm really hard on Baptists because I went to one of their Bible colleges for six years. I got a master's degree from a Baptist Bible college. I call it a cemetery, but... Uh, they don't realize that when you disobey God's laws, and I'm not talking about sacrificing sheep with their blood. No, that was nailed to the cross. I'm talking about when you don't obey God's governmental laws, like murders. The Bible clearly says murders should be put to death. If you don't believe me, read the book of Numbers, read the book of Leviticus. God didn't want murderers living 50 years, having a chance to escape from prison and do it again. No, he told you what to do with murderers. But there had to be two or three witnesses. And uh, the thing is, when you disregard God's laws, you're basically telling him that your ways are better than his ways. Yeah. Yeah, the U.S. Supreme Court knows better than the Lord that created the heavens and the earth. It's basically disrespecting him when you think about it. And I've had so many people arguing, saying, ah, well, those laws were nailed to the cross. Whatever, dude. I hope you enjoy what's coming because it is coming and you're going to be here to reap, to sow what you've reap, uh, to reap what you've sown. You know, but uh, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. Verse 6. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. Keep that in mind. We're going to read this whole chapter, and then I'm going to go back and uh, read parallel verses in other parts of the Bible. Verse 7. The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all the merry-hearted do sigh. The mirth of tabrets ceased. The noise of them that rejoice ended. endeth. The joy of the harp ceaseth. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. Verse 11. There is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city is left desolation, and the gate is smitten with destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree. Olive tree was a symbol of Israel. And as the gleaning grapes when the vintage is done. Uh, the, vine, the vine and the vineyard was another symbol of Israel. The fig tree was a symbol of Judah. Now, realize, Judah was part of Israel, but every tribe had their own symbolism. But 
the olive and the grapes were the symbol of Israel as a whole. Verse 14. They shall lift up the, their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. Now, I believe this is the remnant now that he's talking about. Wherefore, glorify ye the Lord in the fires. In the fires. Keep that in mind. We're going to cover fires. Even the name of the Lord, God of Israel, in the isles of the sea. What isles in the sea have honored the Lord? Well, Greece is a country of islands. And guess what? The New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew. What island printed the King James Bible and translated it from the Hebrew and the Greek into the language of English? And guess what? The number, the, the most popular second language in the entire world is English. If you have a bachelor's degree, you can go almost many, many, many countries and get a job teaching English, if it's your first language. Uh, you can go to Japan, you can go to China, you can go to Thailand, you could go to Malaysia and teach English. If you have any kind of a bachelor's degree and you're from the U.S., the U.K., New Zealand, Australia, they want English teachers because it is the language of business. Like I say, it's the most popular second language in the world. So what island in the sea printed the Bible in English? England. The United Kingdom, Britain, the King James Bible people, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea, from the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteousness. But I said, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me, the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously, yea, the treacherous, treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Verse 17, fear and, the pit, fear and the pit and the snare are upon them. What's the pit? I think the pit of hell. And what's a snare? It's a trap. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon them, O inhabitants, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit and he, he who that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. Remember that. The foundations of the earth do shake. We're going to cover that. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. Ah, the earth is clean dissolved. What happens when you take salt and you pour it into uh, pour some salt into a glass of water and stir it? It dissolves. It's still there, but it is you can't see it anymore. It's dissolved, right? The earth is moved exceedingly. Verse 20. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison. What prison? Hell. And after many days shall they be visited. Remember that. And after many days shall be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients 
gloriously. All right. Let's go back and uh, take a look at some of these parallel verses. Let's see. In verse 1 it says, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh, maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. Uh, verse 3, The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled. For the Lord hath spoken this word, The earth mourneth and fadeth away, the earth languisheth and fadeth away, the haughty pe people of the earth do languish. Now verse 6, Therefore the, hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate, because the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. All right, let's take a look at Second Peter chapter 3. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works there are, that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Didn't we just read dissolved in Isaiah? Oh yeah. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and goodness? Now remember, Romans 9.27, Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, that the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant, a remnant shall be saved. Romans 11.5, Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So, there's only going to be a remnant people. Uh, God promised that there'd be, Jesus promised us that there'd be, uh, in my Father's kingdom are many mansions. I don't think there's going to be as many mansions as some people think there's going to be. But uh, a remnant. All right, let's go back to Isaiah 24, verse 13. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people... There shall be as the shaking of an olive tree and as the gleaning grapes when the vintage is done. Now in Matthew 24, verse 29, Jesus said, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. In Revelation chapter 6, uh, let's see. I guess we'll do, may as well read the whole chapter. Revelation 6, verse 1. And when I saw the Lamb... And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder from one of the four beasts, saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there came out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. There was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I 
heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. So basically, a measure of wheat, like a loaf of bread, is going to cost a penny, which was a day's wages for an unskilled laborer. Can you imagine a loaf of bread costing a day's wages? There's two ways of looking at it. Either food was very scarce and very expensive, or uh, labor had become so cheap that, um, you know, either food had gotten very expensive or, or labor had gotten very cheap. You know, maybe getting jobs were scarce and uh, they were paying so little. So, personally, I think it was a uh, famine. So, all right, verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked to behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger, famine, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So, he saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, Okay, and they cried with a loud voice. You know, how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So when you hear people say, uh, you know, when you die, you're just asleep and you don't know anything. Well, these people, uh, they had been killed. Their souls were under the altar of God. And they're crying out to God, when are you going to avenge our blood? So soul sleep is wrong, people. You know, and there's all, you know, the Jehovah's Witnesses are famous for teaching it. But uh, they are uh, perfect examples of false prophets. Verse 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Now, here's something else to think about. If the pre-trib rapture was true, all these people that are getting killed during the tribulation would be missing the marriage supper of the Lamb. Because that's what the Baptist churches teach. They teach that the pre-trib rapture, every, they go up there, they miss the tribulation, they're having the marriage supper of the Lamb, and everybody else down here is dying for their faith in Christ while they're having dinner. Uh, I don't think so. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren, that they should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Here's the punchline. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. Shaking, right? And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Remember, the sun's darkened and the moon doesn't give her light. Verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Oh yeah, you wicked devils. Hide yourselves in your underground bunkers. Let's see if Christ can find you. 
And they said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Uh, for those of you that don't uh, thought I was not telling you the truth about the vineyard being Israel, um, Isaiah 5 and verse 7. I covered this in a previous study, but I'm going to hit it again. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And behold, uh, oh, I'm sorry, and the men of Judah, his pleasant plant, and he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry. All right, Isaiah 24. Uh, let's see, verse 22. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. So where is that found? Well, that is referenced in Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. I've had people tell me that the devil and Satan are two different beings. Uh, no. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up. Huh, isn't that we just read in Isaiah 22? 24, 22, Isaiah 24, 22, And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited. Let's go back to Revelation 20. Verse 3, And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. Why is there a thousand years where Satan's going to be bound? Well, personally, I believe that all the children that died in childbirth, all the aborted children are going to be given a chance to be born and to, well, I don't know about born of a woman's body. I don't know about that. But they're going to be given a chance to be given a body to be able to grow up without Satan being around and get a chance to be tried and tested, just like everybody alive as ha ever has and then after a th approximately a thousand years satan's going to be loosed and then he's going to be able to uh, do his dirty deeds and see if he can get some more followers so verse two or verse three and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived with and reigned with Christ a thousand years years people this the thousand years is just the introduction but the rest of the dead this is the uh, the people that are not in Christ but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished this is the first 
resurrection. See, that's another thing that kills the pre-trib rapture. How can there be a resurrection before the first resurrection? There isn't. There's only two resurrections. The first resurrection is at the end of the tribulation, and then the, the second resurrection is after a thousand years after the first one, approximately. There's only two resurrections in the Bible after the, um, well, in the future. This is, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Now, this is the, the judgment of the wicked people. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Wow, we're going to be judged according to our works. Not our salvation, but uh, your position in Christ will be judged by the things that you did in this life. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. All right, let's get ready to close this out. But let's go to Matthew chapter 25 and verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven, now this is Jesus speaking. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So here it is, Christ is going to heaven. And who are his servants? His apostles and his believers. And he gave them his goods, uh, his sheep. And it's our job to take care of the sheep, which is why I'm doing Bible studies. And like I tell you, I'm a I'm an amateur. Professionals get paid. Amateurs do not. Well, occasionally somebody sends me something, but, you know, I don't do this for money. Um, if I did this for money, I'd be making far less than minimum wage, trust me. So, which is okay. I'm trying to uh, put my treasures in heaven, not so much here on the earth, so. But that's that's the thing, you know, we're... We're supposed to do things for Christ, okay? And so let's take a look. So, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, and to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. So, Christ went to his far country, heaven, right? Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. 
I don't know if this is like a, an evangelist that won five souls to Christ. I don't know. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained an other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Did you catch that? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Those are words I hope to hear one day. Verse 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, here thou hast, that is thine. So here it is, this guy was afraid and the thing that the Lord had given him, he didn't do anything with it. Nothing. Verse 26, His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. What's a sloth? It's a slow animal. When you've heard somebody called slothful, it means they're lazy. Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. You know, if there's holy angels, there has to be unholy angels, right? And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a, shep as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. You ever notice that socialists and communists always call themselves the left, leftists? They know what they are. They know what they are. Trust me. So, and, and what is the symbol of the church of Satan? A goat, isn't it? Isn't it? The Baphomet, the goat, the goat's head. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's in your face, people. The Bible, it's so true. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Listen carefully. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, 
and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, or, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee, sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Verily I say unto you, In as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So if you've done it to one of the Lord's servants, one of his brethren, you've done it to him. Then shall he all say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. See, people, once you're saved, good works should follow salvation. I mean, that's just the way it is. And there's people that will argue that if you do good works, that you're trying to earn your salvation. Don't listen to those people. They're idiots. They're probably devil seed anyways. They probably work for the devil. Or they're one of his children. You know? Do you know why orange trees produce oranges? Because they're orange trees. Orange trees produce fruit. Apple trees produce apples. You know, pear trees produce pears. Walnut trees produce walnuts. If a tree doesn't produce fruit, what is it? It's no it's worthless. It's just taking up space. Cut it down and burn it for firewood. Period. That's a um, physical description with a spiritual application. You know, why take up the ground? Plant something there that's going to put out fruit. You know, fruit follows salvation. And if you're, you know, and if somebody's not saved, they won't have any fruit. Fruit is proof of salvation. You don't do fruit to become saved. You produce fruit because you are saved. So, and there's going to be, you know, the guy that with the five talents that earned ten talents, you know, they took the guy with the one talent, they took the one thing they had away from him and gave it to the guy with the ten. You know, that's how it works. Those that work hard in the Lord are going to be rewarded by giving more responsibility. Luke chapter 19 gives a, another angle to the same story. Verse 12, Luke 19, 12. He said, therefore, Jesus speaking, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. Doesn't that sound familiar? They didn't want Christ to rule over them. Verse 15. And it came to pass when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man 
had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, thou hast authority over ten cities. So he's going to be a ruler over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. Ah, what is austere? Well, according to Webster's 1828, an austere man is a severe, harsh, rigid, stern person. So basically, he's telling Jesus he's harsh. For I fear thee, because thou art an austere man, thou takest up where thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. So he's basically telling them, you're taking things that other people worked on. You know, you're, you're reaping where you didn't sow. You know, well, duh, you know, that's what evangelists are for. Evangelists sow, and the Holy Spirit draws them, and, you know, they get saved. And then hopefully you got a teacher around to turn the baby into a soldier. So, thou knew, uh, let's see. All right, so, and I feared thee because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man. Oh, yeah? You think I'm harsh? Okay. Taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore, then gavest, thou, uh, gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury? And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that hath ten pounds, and they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I say unto you that unto every one that hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. And that's coming at the end of this age. All right, I hope Matthew, I'm sorry, I hope Isaiah chapter 24 makes sense. But uh, people are going to be judged their positions in the kingdom, whether you're a worker, a supervisor, or a manager is going to be based upon what you do on this earth. And of course, we have different jobs. I mean, you have teachers, you have evangelists, you have different diversities of gifts. So, but I hope you learned something. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, all glory and honor belong to Him forever and ever. Amen.